Now we're gonna do a head gasket replacement on a fourth gen Prius. This one right here is a 2016. We can tell you everything you need to know and what to do. First thing is underneath these plastic caps, you have 14 millimeter nuts. Remove those, remove the winch wiper assembly. Plastic kit, uh, clips under uh, that hold down the plastic. And then pop this guy up. On the windshield wiper, wiper assembly, you're gonna remove this 10 and that 10. Remove that clip, bring this forward. Then you're gonna remove this 14 and that 14 right there. You don't need to remove these ones right here, but you do need to remove the 10 millimeter and that's on both sides. Also remove those two 10s right down there. And there should be two 10s back there. One's missing, makes the job a little easier. Also a few more 10s and uh, behind the windshield wiper assembly. Now that that's off, these three tabs right here, remove them. Now remove that 10 millimeter, the other 10 millimeter, and remove the clamp and pull that unit off. Next, gonna remove this 10 millimeter. There's one down there. Gonna remove this clamp, that clip, these two, I'm sorry, these two clamps, you're gonna remove the top part, and there's two more 10 millimeter bolts down on the bottom. You take off this air filter housing. On a side note, it is a little annoying to remove this, but you'll get it out. Those are the two bolts down there I was talking about. To make the job easier, you're gonna remove the three 12 millimeter bolts. You have that one, that one, and there's another one back here. Also, push this tab in. Once you remove this, this air box down there will be, uh, uh, will be easier to remove. I gotta get it off. I'm gonna yeah, it's, it. a, it's a bit of a pain to remove sometimes, but it comes out. I get the hoses, they get stuck on there, and yep. Next, we're gonna jack up the uh, the car, put it on a jack stand, safety first, remove the wheel, and we also tuck the wheel under the car for added safety. Then we come over here, and you'll see where the radiator drain is. Now, they're gonna have two plastic wing nut drains. Um, you're gonna have um, two of them. You're gonna go for the, you're gonna drain the upper one. That's the radiator. The lower one is for the inverter, okay? If you start seeing this one go down, you're draining the wrong one, you need to drain that one. So make sure you do, I dropped the phone, sorry. Make sure you do the upper one. It's right there. Next, we're going to remove the oil level sensor. It's on the side of the block. The black AC compressor uh, clip, not the orange one. You're going to remove the black one. It's a small one right there. And if I put this camera down there, you're going to also remove this clip. That goes to the knock sensor. You're going to remove the plastic clips. It's hard to see. Plastic clips that hold the wires in place. There's going to be three right here. And the water pump connector. Next is the throttle body. You're going to remove this clip. You're going to remove the four fuel injectors, that clip, and the two tens right here. Off. Okay, so you got to take off this temp sensor, and there's another one yes. back here we're going to take off. One? I don't think we need a light. They can see it. Okay. Uh, that one right there. Okay, after those temp sensors, the two, you're going to remove the EGR and the cam sensor. Also, the four coils and the variable uh, solenoid. You have a tap back here. You have a bolt right here and another tap right here. And pretty much, uh, you're going to remove this guy. So, you're going to take those wires kind of fold them back out of the way. I'm speeding it up so you, you know you can talk because nobody's gonna hear anything. Oh no, I'm just because these are a little tighter. Another tab 
right here. Don't forget the clip for the oxygen sensor right in the back. Now we're gonna remove the cover um, to get to the harmonic balancer and all the other stuff on this side. Now you have uh, a clip right here, a clip right there. There's also some 10 millimeter bolts facing up from the bottom. Remove those and you can be able to pull the cover out of the way. Now with that cover removed, we can uh, get to the oil, to drain the oil, it's a 14 millimeter bolt. You have the quake resistance sensor and the oil pressure sensor. Just remove those two clips. Okay, if you look down into there, you'll see uh, the ground wires. So there are three 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, this one, there's another one behind it. Sorry, the camera angle. But there, there, there's three 10 millimeter bolts right here. One clip and two grounds. Remove those. And now with all that disconnected, you can bring the wires over. We'll just tuck them over here behind the battery. Now they're safe and out of your way. Now you're gonna do two tens for the purge. Unclip it there and just you're gonna just fold it over. Okay, you have two 12s on the back of the EGR. We have this 12 right here. That 12 we need a bolt. We're just going to loosen it right now. We're not gonna take it off yet. And we're gonna take off this one right here. Now this one right here has a 14 bolt in the back end. It's a little hard to see what's in the bottom. Remove this to make it easier to remove the, the, the mount to the O2 sensor connector. Yeah, the heat shroud and the 212 on the EGR. Okay. Now, a little trick for the EGR is we have the 212s. We have that one up there and the one below. We're going to just loosen up the nuts, but remove the studs using, using an E8. It's a, it's a torque socket. Sorry, I don't know if it's gonna go. But it's an E8 and uh, that makes it a lot easier. See, when you remove them, you're removing them and this is what it should look like. Next, we're gonna take off this clamp right here, this clamp right here, and this hose right there. And if you follow this line all the way back to the head, you're gonna remove it from there. I recommend using uh, long needle nose pliers and some hose pliers. These are available at Harbor Freight. To make this job a little easier, we're gonna remove these tens, and then this bracket these right four here. tens, and, yep, and that bracket right there. Sorry, that bracket, 10, 10, 10, and this one below. Now with those, with the, uh, the pipe off, you can see that hose clip. So it's gonna be this hose right here. You can take off that clip. Don't forget that one as well. Next, you have three bolts on the intake, all 12 millimeter, and two nuts, 12 millimeter as well. You can pull the intake out. Now when you pull this back, you're gonna remove the PVC, uh, the PCB, sorry, PCB line, and that comes out with it. So this now, is what it looks like. Next, we're going to remove this hose, loose it, move the clamp out of the way, break free the hose, pull it out. There's two 12s underneath this right here. We'll show you afterwards what it looks like. Move the clamp upward, pull it down, loosen this hose and pop it out. And these are the two 12s that are holding in this line. So we move these 12s all the way, take them out. Next, we're gonna take off these two heater hoses. That one right there and that one right there. So one of the trickiest bolts on this car is going to be the nut bolt, the nut, uh, the bottom underneath this EGR. Uh, we can't get an angle to show people, but the best way to take it off is gonna be a 12 millimeter angled gear wrench. Okay, we're gonna slide it to the side. You're gonna feel it get on, let's see here. 
and you're gonna remove it. Be careful not to break the clip, okay? Be very careful with doing this. And you're gonna just back it out. And once you loosen it up, you should be able to just do it by hand. Yeah, just use your fingers to get it out. You might be able to see it on the side a little bit. Yeah. You can see the stud sticking out right there. The other one that is a pain in the butt, if you look down in there, you'll see, let's see if I can get this angled. You'll see a socket sticking off. That's a 12 millimeter deep socket. We're using a quarter inch drive. Let's see if I can get, oh well. Can't really get it in there, but that's it right there. You're gonna remove the nut, take it off, but then you're also going to need to take out the stud using an E8. So once you squeeze your hand back there and you get that nut off, you're gonna use a long handled quarter inch drive E8 Torx socket to remove the stud. The EGR will not come out unless you remove that stud. Now a little trick for the future, this little bolt that took, this little stud, sorry, that took forever to take off, you don't need to put it back on. It makes cleaning the EGR in the future a lot easier. Okay, it's not gonna hurt the car. Just don't put it back on. Now it's time for the valve cover and all the tens. So you see tens, basically take it out. Of course you have the four tens in the coils and the, the tens between them. The tens on the perimeter, and don't forget the cam um, cam center bolt also acts as a valve cover bolt. It goes all the way in, so you got to remove that one and remove that one as well, and these three. Well, you don't move it. If you are reusing the uh, valve cover gasket. Just be careful with it, otherwise the head gasket set comes with a new one. This little O-ring right here tends to come off with the valve cover and uh, it drops and gets lost, as well as this one right here. Just make sure these stay here or if you're replacing them, put them in and be mindful that you're not double stacking or you're not missing them. Next, you got the uh, 19 millimeter bolt right here recommend using a, an, an impact uh, if you want to use a long wrench and a hammer that might work uh, and you have the 12s all the 12s right here that you can find you can take them all off okay there's four 12s on the uh, oil filter housing yeah basically the lower timing cover is gonna be loosened up while he's doing the ones down there we have the 10 millimeter ground we also have the 10 millimeter right there that we're taking off and um, you have 10 millimeter bolt right here, okay? And you're gonna take off this right there. Once those are out of the way, then you have 17 millimeter bolts and nuts holding on the engine mount. I recommend using a small jack to hold up the engine so it doesn't go down too far. But once you get all these bolts off, uh, you're gonna be able to pull the engine mount out. Actually, I forgot, before you start doing these uh, two 17 millimeter bolts, you have a 14 millimeter nut going up. Do that one first, do not do it last. 
Now for the harmonic balancer pulling off, it, there's no special tools needed. Uh, you can just uh, pull it off. It, sometimes it gets a little sticky, but uh, if you can't pull it off for some reason, these little bolts right here, you just grab some of the 12 millimeter bolts off the car that you pulled off earlier. And uh, just as you tighten them up evenly, as the bolts go down, it pulls the harmonic bouncer out. Okay, but uh, ideally just put a hand on each side and pull back and forth and it'll, it'll slip right off. Now for the engine mount bracket, you have uh, three of these 14 millimeter bolts. Just pull those off, take off those. And you have five bolts, 12 millimeter bolts holding on the water pump. You can get to a few of them up top and a couple of them at the bottom. So now that the water pump and, and uh, the timing cover bolts are off, actually, you know what, we gotta cover this. So after the um, uh, engine mount bracket is off, you're gonna have four more of the 14 millimeter bolts and you have the rest of the 12 millimeter bolts to take off. And there's gonna be one more, sorry, there's gonna be one more 10 millimeter bolt if I can get a focus, it's gonna be right there. Take that off, okay? After all the bolts are off on the timing cover, you're gonna have 12 millimeter bolt on the oil dipstick. Once you remove that bolt, turn it away so you can remove the three bolts on the thermostat. You can pop that out. Once you get that disconnected, you get a pry bar, you pop in, pop it off on this spot right here. We'll show you, hold on. Okay, so as long as you are doubled, or you are completely sure that all the bolts are off on the timing cover, don't be shy, try that open. And you just have to play with the motor to slide it out easier. Yeah, to get this out a little easier, you will have to raise and lower the motor a little bit, but it's not too difficult. Next, you have the timing chain guide, the swing arm guide, and you have two 12s holding on this guide. One up here, one down there. Remove those, you'll be able to pull the chain off. Now it's time for the cam assembly. We are not going to take off the, the black 10 millimeter bolts. We are only gonna deal with the 12 millimeter bolts. Okay, so you have three rows of bolts, you have an extra one down there, and there are two here. Don't forget to take them all off. These are all loose now, but it's still attached. We are not going to pry it up yet. Remember that 12 bolt, the 12 millimeter bolt earlier that I told you to loosen up and not take off. Now we're gonna take this bolt out all the way. Now when we're prying it, we're gonna get a long, well, we use a long screwdriver, but there's a little notch right below here. You're gonna pry it up. Now, when we pick it up, there's still that stud that's right here in the EGR. So we're gonna pick it up and slide it to the left. See, this is the stud that we're talking about. That stud, this one right here, we actually, we just take it off and leave it off. It makes cleaning the EGR a lot easier in the future. It keeps our gas mileage up. Next, we're gonna collect all the roller rockers and start working on the exhaust shroud. There's this bolt, that bolt, a couple more down there. Uh, you'll see, easy to get to with gear wrenches. Now, to get to those back bolts a little easier, Lee, I guess, um, we lowered the engine. By lowering the engine, it gives us more room to work with. Now with that shroud removed, we can remove the last heater hose on the EGR and we have, I don't know if I can get the angle here. Uh, through here, you have the um, what are 12 millimeter yes. nuts, 12 millimeter nuts uh, holding on the exhaust manifold. With the exhaust, there's a one more bolt that we need to take off. It's a 14 millimeter bolt. It's actually underneath the exhaust, it goes that way. The easiest way to do it is from under the car. I can't really get a good angle in here. Uh, but it's that one right there. That's the bolt. Take that one off. That'll allow the exhaust to be moved and it'll make removing the cylinder head a lot easier. Now that all these, uh, the 12s and the 14 underneath are removed, 
you can push this back away from the cylinder head. And to do the head bolts, we're going to be using an M12. Okay, or was this an M10? Sorry, this snap-on. Snap-on. It's an M10. It's basically it's it's just a very little triple square, so it has 12 points. Okay, if you don't have this, AutoZone has has them, uh, uh, but AutoZone size is, is called an M12, and they just have them on the shelf. Half-inch drive. You want to use a breaker bar to break them free. A nice stiff breaker bar uh, to take them off. What you're going to do is you're going to remove the outside ones first and then the next ones to the outside and then the two center ones last. Okay, after the uh, head bolts are out, now it's time to do the fuel line. You don't want to do it too soon because sometimes the, um, the fuel system will repressurize. Uh, I can't do it. I can't do it with one hand. Uh, the fuel system will repressurize as you're doing work. And that just sprays fuel all over the work area. Pinch so the two gonna, Yeah, pinch the two, the two plastic sides, pinch them together, and pull it out. Next, all the head bolts are out. You got a uh, using our screwdriver again. You go right under there. You're gonna pop it up. See, it's all popping. Now, pulling it out is gonna be a little tricky. First, we make sure to wipe the oil off of these to give us some good grip. And I'm going to record manual pulling it out. Turn it a little more. It gets a little tricky because the EGR wants to come with it. Just watch out for that. Yeah. Get it to the side and nothing. Okay, not bad. Now, as you can see where the failure is on this one, it's kind of obvious. So the piston still has a little carbon buildup, a little carbon, a little carbon. This one's a lot cleaner. You can see the uh, head gasket failure right into the number one cylinder. Let's remove this gasket and we're going to check piston height now. Check piston height. We're gonna put the, uh, the harmonic bouncer back on and we're gonna Look and see that these are flush with with the deck. These look good. This looks good as well. Um, by doing this, you're checking to see if the connecting rods had, uh, if the cylinder had hydrolock, which bends the connecting rod. So if, for example, this one was at top dead center, where it's all the way at the top, but this one at the same time was a little lower like that, then you'd know you'd have a bent connecting rod. But in this case, they're both gonna be the same height. As far as the cylinder head is concerned, I recommend sending it out to a machine shop and have it checked. Uh, if you can't afford a machine shop, we can check for leaks. We're gonna check the valve sealing by spraying, by spraying a little brake cleaner. We're looking for any seepage through the valves. I don't see any. Valves are still dry. So now we know that the valves are sealing well. Okay, we're gonna remove this pipe and this water outlet and we're going to resurface the cylinder head. Okay, now it's been resurfaced. You see that nice, clean surface. We're gonna prep the uh, the head, uh, it's not, not the head, sorry, the block. Now with the block, you don't really have to worry about warping or anything like that, especially if, if it hasn't overheated too much. Uh, you're just gonna make sure it's nice and clean and uh, you're gonna prep it well for the head gasket. Now the head gasket that we use is the Felpro. We only use Felpro. We don't bother wasting our time with the Toyota ones because those are the ones that fail. This is the Felpro part number 26515PT. It comes in the HS 26515PT head gasket set. Okay, Felpro. Now you notice this head gasket is not going to sit flat. They are designed not to sit flat. Some people, they will decide to use a little Dremel and open up this hole with the alignment pins to make it sit flat and then ends up failing later. Later, This one 
it is a little bowed and that's how you want it. Now we're going to put the water outlet and the uh, metal pipe off to the metal pipe first and then water outlet goes over it. Make sure to replace the gasket on the water outlet. It should come with the head gasket set. If you only bought the head gasket and you're going on a budget, this gasket you can actually use a layer of silicone on both ends, both sides, a thin layer, and you put it between the head and the water outlet. Now, as far as the EGR and EGR cooler are concerned, um, they this fourth gen doesn't really get plugged up like the third gen does. Uh, we can clean it out, but we're just gonna replace this anyways. But if you're on a budget, like I said earlier, just clean this out. A um, little bit of carb cleaner um, will work just fine. Do not take the Phillips screws off on the plastic part. Leave that assembled. Just remove that 12 and the 12 on the other end and just clean it out with a simple carb cleaner or brake cleaner. Okay, so we are going to, uh, we're going to uh, temporarily attach this EGR uh, cooler to the cylinder head. We're gonna put a bolt there just so it doesn't fall. It can still be a little <laughs> loose. That's going to aid us in putting the cylinder head back on top of the block uh, without the EGR flopping around too much. That bolt right there is just to keep it in place. Might want to tighten it up a little bit more so it doesn't wobble as much. But next is uh, we're putting it on the block. Okay, so now we have manual. Uh, it's going to be lowering the head on the engines. Be careful with that. Always be careful. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, it went on smooth. He has it lined up with the alignment pins. It's on smooth. Uh, so before we start tightening up all the excess, uh, the extra items, next is the head bolts. Okay, now it's time. Now it's time for the head bolts to go in. We dab a little bit of all-purpose grease just on the threads of the bolts. Okay, that gives us a proper reading when we're torquing it down with the torque wrench. So all the bolts have the grease. Now time for, we're gonna zip them down real quick till they touch. Just. So, now we're going to have our torque wrench set to 36 foot pounds. And we are going to start with the middle bolt. Start the middle and then outside and then the furthest bolts. So from center, out. Now that they're all set to 36 foot pounds, the next pass in the same order is going to be 90 degrees. So for example, from three o'clock to six o'clock, 90 degrees, middle out. So Now all the bolts are set to 90 degrees. Now the next pass and final pass is going to be 45 degree. So basically half the distance of the 90 degree, about right there. That's 45 degrees. Now that the head is torqued down, we're going to line up the exhaust with the uh, exhaust studs on the cylinder head. Okay, if you have to lower the engine down to get a little play, go ahead. Grab one of the exhaust nuts uh, when you do line it up and just, just put a little nut on there to keep it. Don't want to tighten it up yet. We still have to put the studs back onto the EGR cooler. Now we have the nutless studs for the EGR cooler. We're going to just get them lined up. We're gonna feed them into the back of the EGR cooler. Now that you have the uh, the torques, and I forgot to mention that the, of course the gasket does need to go on. Uh, and you get all the studs sticking through the holes like they're supposed to. You can go ahead and start tightening them all up with the 12 millimeter nuts. After you have all the 12 millimeter nuts tightened up, time to put the exhaust shroud back on. <laughs> but first, the heater hose.
What Manuel's doing now is he is prepping the top of the cylinder head uh, for a silicone, a bead of silicone to come across. So we are not going to put silicone on this side. We are going to put silicone along the edge on these, on these three sides here. Okay, once again, not on this side. Now that this, the top cylinder head is clean, time for the uh, bead of silicone. Now, if you notice, I went on the outside of the bolt holes, the outside. Do not go on the inside of the bolt holes because you don't want silicone to leak into these oil passages right here. Okay, Get a little messed up spot right here. It's gonna be fine. Now, along with this part being cleaned and siliconed, the cam assembly should be cleaned of excess silicone and dried up so the new silicone will stick. Now before you lay the cam assembly on top of the block, make sure that the little rectangular stamp, usually there's a blue dot right there also, is at 12 o'clock and the mark that goes all the way through to the gear is about two o'clock. Or you can have the larger one, this, this larger one right here, facing around 11 or close to 12. As long as it's in this general area, it'll be fine. Now that it's placed down, we are going to tighten it up with the center bolts first. And then we're gonna work our way out, just like we did the cylinder head. These bolts need to be tightened at 22 foot pounds, no more. Always be sure that these rockers, that none of them had fallen over. The last thing you want to do is think you did the job correctly just to find out that one of these rockers fell off and you have a misfire. These all look good. Now we're going to bolt on, uh, we're going to bolt the, um, the timing guide back on. That's the two 12 millimeter bolts. Now all you people with ADHD out there, uh, pay close attention. We're doing the timing marks. Now, on this one, timing mark that goes all the way to the end to not to the end to the gear the one stretches to the gear that's going to go in the middle of the chain these two links right here okay this is the intake cam next we're going to come down to the crankshaft and we're going to find the single painted link that lines up with the dot. See the dot right there and this link. Go ahead, pull the chain up. Can we adjust it? Yeah, actually bring it back down a little bit so I can get it around that guide. There we go, still on. And now let's go look at the exhaust. Now the exhaust is going to be off a little. Let's see if I can get a good angle. So there's the mark here, there's the link. We need to turn the exhaust so it lines up. Go ahead, Manuel. One more. Keep going. One more, keep going. Nope, no. nope, a little more, a little it's, more. Little. No, it's stuck, it's stuck right now. Oh, it's hitting that? So yeah, just hold it, watch okay. yourself. Readjust. Okay, one more link, boom, there we go. Now be careful with the exhaust because this cam is under load with its springs, okay? Manuel has the guide in his hand and if you can see what he's doing, he's holding the chain tension with one hand and he's sliding the guide back on with the other. Now if he pushes the guide against the block, it's good you'll see that it will not fall back out of the way. So we're going to recheck the marks. That one's lined up. Uh, let's see if I can get a good angle. That one is lined up. And let's recheck the crank. It's dead on. 
And now we have the timing cover. So we're going to make sure that we take off all these, this extra silicone from the timing cover. Okay. And we're going to remove these two nuts on the timing chain tensioner. Now to compress the timing chain tensioner, you have this little hook right here and you have a little uh, tooth or a pog, I guess you call it a paw right here. If I squeeze it, it goes in. However, if I keep it back, I can squeeze it all the way tight. Let me uh, readjust my fingers. And I'm gonna bring this hook, I don't know if you can see it, bring this hook back over, and now it is loaded. We're going to take off the, the gasket and replace it with a new one. Replace this gasket, clean off both surfaces, and bolt this back on time and color. Still loaded. Okay, now it's time to lay a bead of silicone along the edges of here. I'm gonna show you where it goes. This bead is on the inside of the bolt holes. Now we are going to go, we are going to go a little bit of extra silicone right here. This is for the coolant or the water. Just as such, a little piece right here. We are not going to put any right here, but we are going to put some right here. That's it. Don't put it anywhere else. Now one tough part as manual is putting on this timing cover, He's ensuring that the chain does not jump on any of the gears, nor is he making any of the silicone come off uh, by rubbing against the engine. This might take a couple tries. If you uh, have trouble, don't worry. You can take the timing cover back off and reset the timing if you need, but it's not very fun to do. So take your time, be careful. Once you get the bolts started, you can see if the timing had jumped at all. You want to check before you tighten up bolts. On the lower end, uh, you can't really see here, uh, not with a camera, but you will be able to see if you uh, shine a flashlight in there through that seal where the dot is, you can, you'll be able to see the paint on the chain. In this case, it might not show up on the camera, but the timing is still good. As you can see now, manual is tightening up all the 14s and the 12s and the one 10 millimeter bolt that attaches the timing cover onto the block. Now the important step, we're going to activate the timing chain tensioner. Manual has a 14 millimeter wrench. He's going to pull back towards himself. Good. Go ahead. That compresses the tensioner and then he releases it. And you would have heard those clicks if I wasn't talking, but the timing is set now. Now it's time for manual to put on the harmonic balancer. Check and slide it on, tighten it up. And we're gonna start doing the uh, engine mounts, engine mount bracket, water pump. Those you've already covered. Basically I'm going to do the reverse order that we did when taking them off. These are done. Now manual is tightening up the 12 millimeter bolt on the side of the EGR cooler. And then he's gonna do the hoses. Okay, time to put the ground wire back on, the clips for the AC compressor lines, or the AC lines, and the reservoir. Don't forget to hook up the, uh, the AC electrical connector right there as well. So before we install the intake manifold, we make sure that these small ports are nice and clean. And it looks like they are. Time to install it. Okay, now it's time for the intake manifold. Uh, we're gonna place it in, but very important, do not forget to put on the PCV valve vacuum line because 
if you fail to, the car will not start and you have to remove all that other stuff again just to put it back on. Yep. Now we're going to uh, put the hose on back. We're gonna put the hose back on and move your hand down here. Don't forget this one for this one. Actually, this one's going to go on next. And we're gonna get that hooked up just the same way that we took it off. Pretty easy to see. I'll push it in a little bit. And then 12 millimeter bolt holds it on there, there. And then this guy goes there. And that one goes on the inside part right yeah, there. Yeah, that one goes. This one goes boom like that. And yeah. Okay. Make sure this gasket, sorry, uh, too close. Uh, this gasket, is, it has a little clip, so it clips right on. Make sure this little O-ring, uh, orange O-ring type thing is here. This is securely in, but not tightened yet. We're going to attach the pipe. The pipe. And there, there. Now it's time to tighten up all the bolts. We have these tens we're gonna tighten up. We, now it's time to tighten up the 12 right here and the 12 back there. Also, I don't know if you've already done it, now is the time to tighten up the 212 nuts on the uh, exhaust to EGR cooler connection. Now it's time to tighten up all the bolts. We have these tens we're gonna tighten up. We, now it's time to tighten up the 12 right here and the 12 back there. Also, I don't know if you've already done it, now is the time to tighten up the 212 nuts on the uh, exhaust to EGR cooler connection. Okay, we're going to not hooking up this hose yet, but this hose, it is time to hook it up. Slide the clamp. Next, our wires. There we go. And just get everything ready. I'm going to go over the wires in a bit. Now don't forget, down here we have the, the three wires, the oil pressure sensor, the rear of the AC compressor, and the connector that goes on to the knock sensor. We also have the water pump connector. And don't forget the throttle body. Next is going to be the air box. And then, oh. Good luck. Okay. Next is going to be the, uh, the air filter housing with the bolts. Don't forget to tighten up these 12s back again. Okay, you have the, uh, the intake piece going here with the bolts down there. Pretty much it's going to be just the, the same part as the, uh, the beginning of the video. Uh, don't forget the wires on the back side for the, for the oil pressure sensor and the uh, crank position sensor. Uh, what else? The grounds. And the ground wires. Definitely the ground wires will go here. Okay, now the car is back together. We have the coolant, the oil, we replaced the spark plugs, the head gasket job and everything. Uh, the sun is in our way, giving us some bad visuals. But we're gonna go ahead and start this. Let's see. All right, sounds good. Just make sure you watch this video a few times before you start. Thank you. <laughs> 